in your pantry all the time. You see them in your cabinets. But what about your closet for some shoe storage? A Lazy Susan shoe carousel. That's what we're going to look at today. But before we get started, I'd like for you to know that a cut list and a materials list for this project can be found on my website at ll-woodworks.net. And when we start the build, you're going to see me cutting 24 by 48 inch sheets of plywood down. Uh, that's the starting point. But I had already done a lot of pre-cutting from 4x8 to, to 4x4 and now to 24 inch by 48. So that's where we'll pick up. Thanks for tuning in. Now let's build this thing. I have my circle cutting jig set up on my bandsaw. If you didn't see the details on this jig, you can see my video about the round wall clock, making a round wall clock. I used it in there and I explained it in there. I'll put a link in the bottom. But I'm ready to cut. The, it'll be slightly under 24 inch circle. I think I've got it set at about 11 and 7 eighths radius. So now we'll cut all six of the shells. I made a paper template of how they're going to be divided up. I've got it divided up into six sections every 60 degrees. And if you remember, again, on the clock video, I showed you how to divide a circle into 12 different sections. Well, it's the same concept. All I'm doing, since I made me a template, I don't have to do this six times. I just put my template down and I'm just marking. This is where our dividers will go. Do this on each shelf. Okay. Okay, I'm going to cut our dividers to length now, and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do that. First way is going to be with my crosscut sled on my table saw. I've got a stop block set at uh, just slightly under 8 inches. That way I can get 3 out of each sheet. And then I'll show you doing it on the chop saw.
there's a couple of them down with a cross cut sled. Now we'll move to the chop saw. Much like the cross cut sled on the table saw, now I've got a stop block set at just a little under 8 inches. I use one of the other ones as a, as a sample. And now it's just a matter of cutting the rest of them on the chop saw. Well, I have all the dividers cut that will separate each section where shoes will fit. There's six on each layer, and there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six layers. And each divider is going to get four pocket hole screws. So that's 144 pocket hole screws that I have to drill. And that's what we're going to do now is... Go ahead and drill all 44 holes for the pocket hole screws for each divider, and then we'll start the assembly process. One down, 35 to go. Sure could use that Craig K4 or K5 system, don't you think? Hundred and forty-four pocket hose later, the dividers are done. Do a little touch-up sanding and then I think we're ready to start. If you remember in the design, there's three double sections making up six different sections for shoes to go in. And in each section has six compartments, but each section has a lower compartment, a divider, and then an upper compartment. And then I'm going to assemble the dividers into one lower section. I'm not going to do the whole thing because this thing is just uh, repetitiveness. But I am going to show you how we put together... Uh, oh, I'll put in three or four dividers for you and then go off camera and then show you how we will uh, join the upper and the lower sections. Hey, if you remember, we divided it up into six sections. <clears throat> now I put a stop mark one inch from the edge all the way around. This is how we'll pocket hole screw them in. I'll center it on that line and on this stop mark. I am doing both glue and pocket hole screws. Not much glue, so I center it on the line, on my stop mark, and then just drive the pocket hole screw in. and repeat. There's the one we just finished. You can see it has all six sections in it for each shoe compartment. Now what we have to do, there will be one to set on top of it, but we have to do it kind of backwards. And just like this one, everyone's got the lines. We line up 
the divider with that, but we also have to remember the center line. So I've got a quarter inch dowel that I'm going to run through and go through the bottom and set it up and that will act up as our pivot so that we can make little adjustments as we screw the bottom, each bottom piece in. So now each one on the bottom here I have to line up with my little mark and then I'll put one screw in then I'll move to the next one and finesse it and we've got, you can see we've got our, our pivot point here to keep us centered. And I'm just going with screws on these, I'm not going with glue on this one as well. And this one has to be done by hand because I can't get a driver in there. There we have our section. Now that's the lower compartment of, of a section. We've got an upper section that sits on top of this. Remember template that we use to lay out the 60 degrees and I will stagger it to where the center of, of this upper section is between these two. You can see this process, assembly process, is the most time consuming. And I already had one of these made. It was just a repeat of what you saw. Now we'll drop the top part of this section down on top of it, line it up, and then it'll just screw together just like that one. And again, we have our center here that we have to find. Okay, so we're there. We're going to stagger. There we are. And so we just repeat. That's what we just went through. We just simply repeat it. So this is one completed section, and there's three of those. They'll set on a base. On the base we'll have a Lazy Susan, so the first section will spin on the Lazy Susan. Then on top of this one, we'll put a Lazy Susan. Second section will set on top of it and spin individually, and then there'll be a third one as well. So it'll be a pretty tall structure actually. So that's how we're going to work. Just repetition. So we'll build two more like this, then they'll be, we'll put them all three together. Well here's our three sections all complete. The other two were made just like the one that we, we previously made. You also see the base sitting there. And I've installed the Lazy Susan on all three pieces and I'll go into detail and show you how I position those. The base it's just basic construction. It's a box. I 45 mitered the, the, the sides at 45 and I put a couple of support runners uh, under it and then just put a piece of three quarter inch material on top. So okay, you can see the base here. These Lazy Susans are 12 inches in diameter and I made the base 14 by 14 it's about two and a half inches up off the ground, so it'll look like this unit's kind of floating. Now, in order, in order to center all this, when we cut the circles, we drilled a quarter inch hole in each one of the, of the units. Well, I did the same thing on the base. The center of this Lazy Susan is like six and a quarter inches in diameter. So, um, with my circle cutting jig, I made a six and a quarter inch diameter uh, plate, if you will. Put that little plate in the center of the base, and then I slipped the Lazy Susan down over that, and then I screwed the Lazy Susan down. And that's how I mounted 
all three of the Lazy Susans, both in the base and then in the two units. Now these Lazy Susans are made to screw into the base and to screw into the top part, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to keep this thing flexible. Like I said, this middle diameter was six and a quarter. This diameter was nine, I think nine inches. So again, with my circle cutting jig, I made three nine inch diameter discs. Each one of those discs goes on the bottom of each unit. The disc, nine inch disc goes on the bottom, Lazy Susan goes on the top of each unit. And the way that this assembles is, we have our base with our nine inch, our 12 inch Lazy Susan with that nine inch hole there. The first section, this disc sits in that Lazy Susan. Just slips right in there. And then the second section, the nine inch disc on the bottom, sits on top. And then the third section fits, the caps it all off, sitting uh, on the very top. So all three of them can spin independently of each other. I do want to show you one little detail that I put on the top unit. This is the very top unit where you don't need a lazy Susan. But I came in with some three-quarter by three-quarter inch oak and I mitered them all at 30 degrees so I built a little uh, ledge or rail system if you will so that as this thing spins if there's anything on top like a, a jewelry box or a shoe box or whatever it might be on top so that it'll keep it from sliding off as this thing spins. I've also I've put one coat of clear shellac on this entire system and then sanded it. Now since it's going to be in the closet I uh, didn't worry too much about tons of protection and we're just about ready to assemble it in its entirety. I will say that the original plan, that this is not my plan, I got it off the Better Homes and Garden site, I think it was. The original plans call for 27 inch circles. And that's probably needed if you're needing to house large shoes when you start talking about size 11 or size 12 uh, or larger or boots. That also throw it into a different category on material usage. That's why I cut mine down so that I could use 24 inch circles or 23 and 7 eighths inch circles so that I could use 4 by 8 sheets of plywood cut down to 4 by 4, cut down to 2 by 4, cut down to 2 by 2's which is what I made these shelves at. So you have to look at what your needs are. This suits our needs fine. Uh, most of this is my wife's shoes, and mine will fit in here as well. About size, depends on the make, size 10, 10 and a half, and they will fit fine. So, that is our Lazy Susan. I hope that this was interesting to you. I hope you learned something in the build process. Links will be in the bottom to where you can buy the Lazy Susans. Uh, also, where you can buy the Craig pocket hole. Uh, equipment, both the screws and the jigs to drill those holes. Also be some links in there to my other videos uh, where I referenced how to build a circle, circle cutting jig. So, but, but I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Like our video. If you haven't subscribed, if you're a new visitor to our channel, we ask you to subscribe so that you'll be notified when you'll get future videos. And leave us a comment. Leave us a comment on what you thought or any improvements. Or, or We're always looking for interaction with our viewers. So we really appreciate it. You can find us on our website, ll-woodworks.net, on Instagram at ll underscore woodworks, and on Facebook at ll woodworks. We would love for you to visit it and leave us comments there as well.
So until next time, work safe.